Welcome back to the workshop. So long time viewers of this channel recognize this machine. This is my homemade DIY CNC machine. And this is basically what got me into YouTube. So I put out a video series, um, I think it was about 28 episodes on the main build itself over a long period of time. It took probably nearly two years to build and uh, put it all together. So while I was making that series, I had two main comments that kept recurring. And one of them was, can we have some narration? Because they were basically set to music while I just built it. And the second one was, can we have some CAD plans of this machine? So basically what I've done, I've edited down those 28 videos into three short videos, and then I've added some narration just to explain what I was doing back then when I built it. Now, not only that, um, if you keep watching right to the end of the third upload of this kind of director's cut, these shortened versions, at the end of the third episode, I'll explain how you can download the CAD for this in Fusion 360 format for free. Let's get started. So this takes me right back to the beginning. This is how it all started, really. So a friend of mine asked me, uh, yeah, if you can do this line boring, can you make a video and we'll stick it online and um, on YouTube or something and let's have a look. So I thought, well, I'll give it a go. So here we are, we're making, um, it's like a, the, the holder or the frame that's gonna hold this spindle holder onto the lathe, a jig, a fixture if you like. So we're just marking out the centers on the fixture uh, and then we're making sure those line up on the lathe at the center of the lathe. Here we're just dialing it in to make sure it's aligned in that axis and then aligned in the other axis. And then that little jig that holds it in place was, uh, had little grub screws just to get it leveled. So this is the operation called line boring. So it's effectively you have this very large solid bar, that's the bit you can see rotating. It's driven by what's called a dog at that end there. You can see that rotating around. That's putting the drive in from the lathe. And then it's held between those two centers. So that's that cone shape there. And you'll see in a moment in that solid bar there, I think it's about two inch bar, something like that. There's a little uh, cutting tool, high speed steel cutting tool that's spinning around very fast. You can just about see it there. And then the, uh, the lathe itself is slowly traversing. So it's moving that carriage and it's making the cut all the way down. So here we are making the adjustment. So you back off that uh, the locking screw there and then this next screw is just going to push it out slightly, maybe 0 0.0. Let's have a look how far I went. Okay, about another 0 0.03 on the radius. So double that for the diameter. And that's what you, the extra material you're going to remove. Lock it back up and then away we go again. So in this shot, the camera is still and the, uh, the carriage is moving towards you. So it's effectively cutting or boring it out uh, from the nearest end to the furthest end there. So I sped this up a little bit so you can see it. And got a pretty good finish on that. It was a bit of an interrupted cut because there's a little bit of a gap there you can see there, but it worked really well. Deburr the edge and then moment of truth, does it fit? That was quite, uh, quite a relief when that went in. That. So here it is mocked up in some of the other parts there. So those two side pieces, they're 30 millimeters thick. You can see they've got a hole all the way through for the double ball screws on Z. And there's the spindle mounted. And a couple of the rails are just trial fitted. So as you'll see later in the design, there's uh, four linear rails that go on this. So there's four to be leveled up. So first of all, we're just checking that the, the whole thing has been machined flat to this this, let's call it a reference plate. It is not It is not a true surface plate, but it's the best and flattest thing I've got. Oh, there's a bit of an animation there, having some fun. Right, so we're just checking just how flat that side is or how level it is compared to the base because we're getting ready just to put some shims on. So here I'm just marking up in uh, millimetres how much we need to shim it. Right, and here we're using foil. Now some people have commented in the past that this is a little bit compressible, so by all means if you've got some thin spring steel um, shim then use that. Uh, now also somebody commented it's not a good idea to indicate the top of the rail and um, having a bit of a think about it yeah I think they're right so this is not the best way to do it you should put the carriage on and indicate off that or indicate off the actual ground ways themselves where the balls run in the sides um, but uh, this is what I did at the time it's a couple of years back now so we're just dialing that in shimming it until it's straight and level Pretty good there, yeah, pretty flat. Oh, you know, with the tools I've got, as flat as I can make it. So we flipped it over onto the other side, so now it's laying on those two rails. Now we've got to not only get these two rails flat, but we've got to get them in the same at the same depth as each other. Uh, it's 
going to be absolutely perfect. So kind of two jobs in one really. So the first one, I think I found whichever one was the highest. I started there and got that shimmed into that level. And then as you'll see in a minute, I moved the DTI across onto the second rail. There we go. And it should come back in about the same place, which it did. So we know they're at the same height. And there we go. And that's pretty level. Again, it's not a good idea to uh, indicate off the top surface. It's not necessarily ground true, but here's what I did back then, and um, the machine has been fine since. So, definitely worth indicating off the carriage. So now we've obviously got the carriages on the rails there. Now we start to build up some of the y-axis assembly. So it's a box-in-box -box construction for the x and y. So just make sure that's nice and square. I've cut a lot of these parts out already, I didn't film that, um, took some photos but I didn't include that in the video, I think you, you get the rough idea there. So we're putting it together with these M5 cap head screws into the rails and then just making sure it runs smoothly in there because these rails if you preload them, if you get everything out of line they, they can bind up. So that's one side done. And when we spin this round you'll see on the other side, uh, not yet, oh you can see one sticking out there, so that brass tube there is, um, is a, a, a uh, what we call that a custom made uh, grease nipple uh, because the bearings themselves are hidden once it's all put, put together and built up. So these are the long sides on there, 10mm thick. Spin it around there, they can get a better shot of the, uh, the grease tubes there. And they poke through those holes so you can grease it after it's all assembled. And then the last one, is it going to fit? Moment of truth. Is yes. Nice thing about CNC machining, if you, uh, if you machine the parts to size, it fits. Right now we're going to fit the z-axis ball screws. Well, we're actually going to, only going to fit one of them because at the time I was filming this, the other one was on my uh, CNC machines because I still had a lot of parts to make. Uh, so this was just the second one that uh, that I'd purchased just so I get the thing going. Now at the moment I'm just kind of lifting the y-axis up and that makes it a little bit easier to get the, the ball screw mount in at the top which I'll show you in a minute. So this will be the new ball screw going in and as I say the other one was at this point it was still on the existing CNC machine because I still had quite a few parts to make. So we're just carefully dropping that in. So that's going inside that 30mm section that goes at the side. That was quite fun to bore out on the lathe uh, but we got there. And um, these ball screws are not supported at the other end, they're quite short, so I think anything under about 300mm long you can probably get away with just running uh, the ball screw support at one end and then running on the ball nut as kind of your second bearing. If you're getting longer than that you probably want to think about having uh, the support at the other end. So here we are just putting the ball nut in. Now we're putting it loose at this point because it's not necessarily aligned. So we've got the axis all lined up and everything, so now we need to align the ball screw to that axis. I just watching this back a minute ago just so I could see what I was about to do and comment on. Uh, yeah, that, uh, that reminds me of that drill. Um, yeah, it's a um, big smoke came out of it not long after this operation. You can see it's a very well used uh, cordless drill. Had it many years and it finally died. So this was about the last thing it did. It was making funny noises at this point anyway. Yeah, first movement. I'm really, really pleased with that. So at this point, obviously, that nut is, the ball nut is loose on there. And we're basically just trying to get it to find its own centers to get it aligned. So now we've got it to the fullest extent. It should have found its own center and then just nipped it up there and then nipped the ball screw bearing block up at the top as well. And that's probably about as, as aligned as you can get it. Now these uh, ball screws, they are slightly flexible. Uh, so they will take a little bit of misalignment. So you don't have to be too ultra careful on it. So uh, obviously this is sped up, just whizzing up to the top. Nice. Okay. So this plate, so in case you uh, haven't seen this, this build before, this is a twin ball screw on the Z axis as well. So you, this plate holds the stepper motor on. So that's what goes in there. Um, we have left a little space there. You'll see a cover made later in the video that goes over the whole thing, just made out of aluminium sheet. Yeah, so stepper motor goes on there, one on the other side. Then in the middle there you can see those three holes and there's quite a big scoop at the top if you like. 
Now this was to allow a future uh, project where if I move the spindle out, so I put a cartridge in there, just a, a dummy cartridge at the bottom that held um, say an ER32 collet or something, and then the idea was I'd move the spindle up to the top and have it via a belt drive with a pulley, so I could do two to one or something, get lots more torque out, and then some of those holes allowed me to do, I had a custom uh, power drawbar uh, design made up, but yeah, I've been running it a few years and I've not bothered, but I had that option, I gave myself that option. So here we are putting the side pieces on now, so there's two of these, one this side and then you'll see one in a moment the other side. Uh, the bit I've got in my hand you can see there's two plates, there's one there and then there's one above it. And the idea of this is, this allows you to level um, uh, level the whole axis, So because you've got to tram this in. You've got to not only skim the bed, but then make sure that the Z axis goes up and down so it's trammed uh, 90 degrees to that. So there's two plates, plate on plate, and then there's uh, I don't know about 12, probably M8 um, hex screws on there, holding two plates together, and then in between each of those uh, there were grub screws, so you could level the lower plate relative to the top one. You'll see that a bit later in the video. So the idea is you can dial it in those very last, that last little bit. So obviously try and machine it as close as you can, get it as close as you can, but you can then adjust it and get it dialed right in. So we're just uh, tightening it up, and there we go. So I think at this point I was looking pretty, well, I was pretty pleased with it. You see it's looking quite nice there. You can see all those holes I talked about. So there's the missing ball screw we haven't put in there. The spindle at the moment would go in that big hole in the center. And then those three at the top there were for allow, uh, to allow for this power drawbar design that I had. And then also you could have an indirect drive to drive a cartridge. So it was quite flexible in terms of um, the options that I gave myself. But as I say in the end, I've just stuck with the, the spindle at the moment. Okay, that's it for this video. I uh, hope you enjoy these kind of short uh, director's cut with a bit of narration. We'll try and go into a little bit of detail um, and talk about some of the decisions that were made during the build process. And uh, yeah, catch you on the next one. Mm -hmm.